this will be continuing from the previous video about the space complexity we are going to see some more example Yes. We have seen already these two examples. In this video, we will be seeing this example uh, 3, where uh, it has a function named ABC where you pass three parameters and it adds some value, some mathematical equation, return that value. In, in this case, if you see A, B, C, it has, they are all integers and return a value which is double. So, how we can calculate 12? For three variables, it is 3 into 4, 12. But since it returns a double value, it will be plus 8. So 20 bytes. This is the space complexity of this code. Then another program, another example. Here we pass two values, A, array A and N, the number of uh, values of that array. So here we declare this to be a floating point. So 0, 0. So here uh, what we do is we add the value. Uh, sum of the this program find the sum of the given array and then finally return the added value so if you take us n elements of sum the space needed is by n is 4 bytes so for this it is 4 bytes the space needed by a is since we are storing array n into a so which is nothing but this since the data stored in a is a floating point the space needed for floating point it is 8 by so n into 8 so that will be the space occupied by this that is for n it is 4 and then n into 8 it is so that much uh, depending upon the value of n the space will be more or less now another one here time complexity but so far what we have seen is space complexity here now we will see the time complexity how will you calculate the tag so here Time taken is nothing but the sum of compile time and the execution time. So now we will see the uh, time uh, needed for this, only these three coding. So i equal to 1 to n, equal to n, sum, in, sum is i into n. So which is, just find the square of a given number. So the final result will be sum of the, uh, that is it will give the square of the number. So what it happens? This for loop will be executed for n number of times and within loop this will be calculated and finally the answer will be uh, printed on the screen using the see out statement. The same program can be written like this, return n into n, which is nothing but again a square. If you give 5, 5 into 5, whereas in the previous case you are putting a loop and within that you calculate the square of number n by multiplying i into n. First time it is 1 into 5. So five, some will have five. Then next term, five. Uh, here uh, we are not adding some, some plus. Not all those things we are doing. What we are doing is just first time one into n, then second time two into n, and so on till it reaches n. So finally only you will have when it reaches n only, it will, the i becomes n. So n into n, it is nothing but sum of uh, that is square of the given number. So here we use a for loop which. Go in which uh, which will be looping till it reaches the end. So see how much number of times it takes. Whereas in this, the same answer can be achieved just by a single run. So this will be more preferable than that. So efficiency with a single statement, you can achieve the uh, same result. So in the above, in just one single execution, the square of number can be found. In the previous example, the loop execution depends upon the value of n. If the value is large, then the number of times the loop executes also increase, thus the execution time and compilation time. Whereas in this example, only uh, whatever may be the value, only a single execution. So it will be more, uh, this will be a more efficient code than the previous one. And here it is linear. Uh, if you take, see what is the number of uh, n? value of n that much time it will take so we call it as a linear uh, complexity time complexity whereas if you see this a uh, loop within loop so how much time it will be executed first when it is i equal to 0 n number of times 
then i equal to 1 again n number of times i equal to 2 n number like this till n so n into n so how, if you want to know how many times this total loop will be executing it is n into n which is nothing but n square so which is nothing but quadratic n squared is a quadratic so the time complexity for this above code will be quadratic now another example this is for binary search so here while low is high, uh, lower value and higher value, here you find the middle value of a binary search and then you change the high and middle depending upon whether the value to be searched in the upper half or the lower half. So this is a piece of code of the binary search. Here what happens, each search the uh, search space will be reduced by this statement and accordingly the high and low value will be changed based on this. So a middle value will be allocated to either to high or lower depending upon whether the search value is present in the upper half or lower half. So since it fastly reduces the search space, we call this as a logarithmic time complexity. So here it divides the search space into half. This algorithm will have a logarithmic time complexity. And this is considered to be a better and best logarithmic, always logarithmic time complexity will be considered as the best, best uh, complexity because each time when you say it divides the search space into drastically it is, uh, drastically it uh, reduces, narrow down the search space. So 